I, I'm, I'm curious, we were talking during the break about, about teaching leadership and, and you made a, a real interesting observation that I totally agree with, which is that you can't really teach leadership in business school. Um, you want to unpack that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's so much of leadership. I mean, you, you go to business school and they they teach you about you know T accounts and where where the, where the numbers go on the balance sheet. It's it's just it's to me it's really impossible to to teach people how to behave and and how to truly understand who they are as a person and what their values are and, and use those values to get things done. I'll give you a great example. When I was going to Columbia Business School. Um, one of the young ladies there was a vice president of ethics for Enron. This poor young lady, uh, we have we have an anniversary meeting, anniversary coming up in a, in a few year, in a few months in New York, where I'm going to see her again. I haven't seen her in a few years. She had taken a job with F Enron as like a VP of ethics and compliance about four months before they went belly up. Right. And this happened right in the middle of our class. Long story on her or the short story on her is it took her like a year to get another job because it, it literally had this four month period where it said Enron on her on her uh, resume. So we were the, the students said, you know, listen, we want to, you know, have an ethics course included in our curriculum here in the business school. And um, the school said at that point said, well, we don't have an ethics course in the business school. That's in the law school, and we. So the obvious question was like, then what? You, then what? What is ethics? And ethics was defined at that time as if you you just obey the law. That that was the total definition in Columbia Business School is ethics is you you obey the law. And we occasionally we'd have guest speakers come in. We had this one lady who ran a desk at one of the big trading houses. I don't even know who it was, and we we got into this whole the whole concept of kind of um, um, asymmetry of information, and her answer was, "Well, it's just buyer beware. If we have information they don't have, you know, we get a trading advantage from it, and we make money, and they lose money. That's just the way it is." And I can tell you, the class exploded, like literally, like people were like out of their minds. Like, and I said, "I can't even believe you're here. I can't believe you're allowed in this building." To say you just said to me, cheating's legal. That's what you said. And so anyhow, now Columbia Business School now has an ethics class. I have no idea what they teach because I haven't <laughs> gone to it. But you know, leadership is really it's it's values based. And then going back to Brad Anderson, who we talked briefly about before, when I went to work at Best Buy, he would talk a lot about servant leadership, and he gave me gave me this book that you can see that <laughs> so. Autry's, Autry's servant leadership, and I've probably given away a thousand copies of this book. So he gave me this book, which I actually read, and and this is Autry's. And there's a couple of people have written on the servant leadership, but there's a page in here that I've used with with my I, I've tried to live this, but the five ways of being uh, authentic, vulnerable, accepting, present, and the one that's really really difficult, useful, <laughs> right. So when I'm talking to young leaders, the first thing I do is send them the book. Um, and then we, you know, authenticity, ethical, useful leadership. It's it's really rare, you know, that a leader stands up and says, so I know, you know, when I was a CEO or a leader in a company and somebody came to me and I said, ask them a question and they said, I don't know. I knew I was on the right path, right? Because if they had the intestinal fortitude to say, I don't know, then you knew that, okay, now this person's being truthful with me. Let, now we can now we can work on this. And more than truthful, truthful, I mean, this is something you're, you're not getting to the core of what we preach and what we teach all the time, which is that it's actually... That's a that's a courageous leader. That's a strong leader that can say, "I don't know." It's when 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 a, when a leader doesn't know and acts like they do, that's a weak leader. That's a that's an insecure leader, and you know that's 
so important for people to understand because people have got it in their head that it's not okay to not have all the answers if you're in charge and they've gotten bad models. And, you know, I, I'm going to say one of them was Jack Welch, you know, was, was, was a classic example to me of, of where this bad type of leadership comes from is, is you don't have to come in with your guns blazing to every meeting, blowing everything up and telling everyone what they don't know. And, this whole idea of seeking understanding before seeking to be understood, of asking questions is so important to real leadership. And the empowerment that gives to people, doesn't it? When you say that as a leader, if you go into your, your team and go, hey, guys, uh, there's this problem. And you know what? I don't know. But I know how we find out you guys. You're the people who I know can come together because I can't do this. Uh, and the empowerment and the the gratitude and the engagement you get from people then stepping up, like, hey, the boss can't do this. We can do this. We can show him how good we are. We can show her how capable we are. And you just get such a different power curve tilt in that sort of dishevelment of before where they're just beaten down, being told what to do. And then when, as Bryce said, when these leaders bullshit their people and give them the answers that they've made up because they don't say, I don't know, and then you get the ramifications of the wrong answer and people taking action on the wrong decision. That causes far more trouble than just saying, look, guys, I don't know. Can somebody come either give me an answer or let's get together and work out the answers ourselves as a group? All of us you know, together can do this. And I think that's such a, as you mentioned, Brian, it's such a hard hurdle for many leaders to get over and accept that. But you can't, you can't know everything in this day and age, in this complex world we're in, it is impossible for an individual, let alone a C-suite, to know all the answers because it's just moving too quick. It's too vast. It's too complex. But if you've got a large organization, somebody in there somewhere will know or collectively with the right questions, as you said, Ron, and the right level of challenge, they will come out with the right answers that you need. 